Hey everybody, Jason Arkels here from the Sculptor's Funeral Podcast, and today we're going to talk a little bit about the Macaneta a Punto, or pointing machine. Now, I think a lot of sculptors out there are familiar with what the pointing machine does. It transfers points in space, uh, usually off the surface of a model, like a plaster cast, and then locates those points relative to other points inside a block of marble. Uh, but there aren't too many videos out there that really seem to explain exactly how it's used, and so I'm going to uh, try to rectify that here. Now, in the picture here, you can see that this is a macaneta a punto, a pointing machine. It's a very simple device. It's literally just a needle, a steel needle, that slides back and forth on a sidearm, and that sidearm is connected to a couple joints that make it sort of very mobile and maneuverable. You can you can put that needle uh, in lots of different positions. One thing to notice on the uh, the needle itself, uh, as it slides back and forth, there's a little there's a little uh, stop there. You see that little thumb screw? You can slide that up and down the shaft of the needle as well. Uh, and I'll explain what that's for in a moment. But the needle and the adjustable sidearm are really just half of the setup you need. What you also need is what's called a croche, or crosswood. And basically, that's just a tripod. You need to make a, a tripod, and usually people make them out of wood, and you make them in the size and shape necessary to fit whatever sculpture you are copying. Now here we see a bust in clay that's going to be copied into marble. And the tripod, you can see, has three feet that are basically needles, or sort of long steel uh, nails that are bent, and so it sits onto the sculpture. And it sits on the sculpture in a very particular way. There are actually three nails coming out of the sculpture itself with little holes drilled in the head so that the tripod sits very, very snugly and without any wiggle movement onto the sculpture each and every time. You can pick the, pick the crosswood up and put it back down, and it's going to stay in exactly the same place. And so then all you need to do is clamp the macaneta a punto, the pointing machine, onto the crosswood, and then you can maneuver the needle to touch any particular point of the surface of the cast. It's very, very simple. Now, as I mentioned, the crosswood can come in all sorts of different shapes and sizes, depending on the uh, sculpture you are going to be copying. And today, I'm going to be copying a deep relief that I made in clay and then cast in plaster several years ago. And uh, so this is going to get a, sort of a different crosswood than what you saw on the portrait bust. So the first thing I'm going to do is prepare the plaster cast and sort of put in three nails uh, that will eventually be where the crosswood sits. Now, because of the shape of this particular piece, I've sort of added extensions. You can see these blocks of wood here that I've added as extensions to the cast. That way the crosswood can sit sort of up above the cast and doesn't get in my way either visually or, or physically. Right? Now they're just pieces of wood with little nails put into the top of the pieces of the wood. Now before I put those nails into the wood though, I'm going to drill little tiny holes, little dents or divots, into the heads of the nails, and this will allow the pointed feet of the tripod, the croche, to sit snugly into position. And it's really important that nothing has any sort of wiggle to it at all. Everything needs to be really just sort of locked into place. And so I'm going to mix up a bunch of epoxy resin, and I'm just going to smother everything I make in resin so it all locks together very firmly. You can see here that I've added it to the side of the, the wooden extension. Uh, even though I've also screwed it into the plaster cast, um, plaster casts, when you're copying in marble, take a lot of abuse, and they get knocked around a bit. And so I want to make sure that that piece of wood never moves relative to my plaster cast. Likewise, you can see that the nail that I've sunk into the top of the extension bar is also slathered with uh, a little bit of epoxy resin, just to make sure there's absolutely no wiggle. And then instead of making sort of a, a T uh, for, the, for the crochet, I'm making kind of a triangle. And this is kind of standard for when you're doing any sort of relief. Uh, it's just going to be a frame that sits well above the, the work itself, and you can attach the, the pointing machine to any part of this crochet. Notice that all the joints of the crochet are also slathered with resin, so nothing has any sort of wiggle whatsoever. And in this picture, you can also see that I've even uh, put resin down the shaft of the nail. And here you see the crochet actually sitting on the block of marble. Now, I, I went ahead and, and started it. I'm not going to show you 
how to do it from the very, very beginning. That's actually uh, how you set up a Machinetta is pretty involved and technical and probably not something I would be able to do in a five minute video. But in a nutshell, what I did is I started off with a, just a, a squarish block of stone. I put the crosswood on top of the stone and marked where the three feet, those three little nails of the crochet, uh, sit on the stone. And I drilled little holes at that place. So basically, you've got um, the crochet, which can sit on the plaster cast in three little holes. And then you've got the crochet, which can also sit into the block of stone. Uh, and then I just sort of eyeballed it and took away a lot of extraneous marble and then started taking points. And so here you can see that I've got the crochet set up on the marble and I've been working on it for several days. Rather than show you how to do a, a marble sculpture from start to finish, I'm really just focusing on the actual process of using the machinetta to take a point. So I, it's a little bit easier to show you sort of midway through the carving uh, exactly how it works. Okay, so we're ready to go. I got the plaster cast, as you can see. And then I've got the machinetta set on top of the plaster cast. And now I'm going to just loosen up the joints of the machinetta, slide the little stop on the needle back, and I'm going to lock the needle into position. I'm going to take a point right off the eyelid, or at the center of the eyelid of this little face I'm carving. Once the needle is locked into place, I just slide it down until it touches the surface of the cast. I look at that point very carefully, I slide the needle back, and I make a little tiny pencil mark directly where the needle touches the cast. We want to keep tracks of the points as we take them, both on the marble and on the plaster cast. Then all I need to do is pick up the entire apparatus, the crochet with the, with the pointing machine, and I place it into the three holes on the marble. And I slide the needle back down until it touches the stone. Then I'm going to make three lines. You can see I'm sort of drawing lines outward from that point. And I'll explain to you why I do that. What it is, is that as if you were just to make a dot where the needle touches, well, as soon as you start chiseling away, obviously you're chiseling away at that spot and all of a sudden your dot disappears. And now you can't really see very clearly exactly where you need to carve. So what I do is I draw these three lines that come out and I carve, you know, the little bit in the center of those three lines, but some of the lines will remain to give me sort of uh, kind of a guideline as to the direction generally that I should be carving. So that shows me where to carve. Now, how do I know how deep to go? Well, one thing I didn't actually show you is that when I located that point off the surface of the plaster cast, I locked the stop on the shaft of the needle down into position flush with the sidearm. All right. So now here you see that the stop is about an inch away from the sidearm. And so the distance between the stop and the sidearm is a visual guide as to exactly how deep I need to carve. So now we see the stop is about an inch away from the sidearm, which means we've got about an inch to carve down. Now, because I'm really close, I'm only, you know, a few centimeters, well, less than a few centimeters away, I'm going to use a curved chisel, and I'm going to, you know, just take away what, what is right there at that point. I don't want to take away too much. I don't want to assume too much. And I want to use a type of chisel, a curved chisel, that will allow me to create a nice rounded crater. And so I want to focus the deepest part of that crater right over the point that I'm taking. I'm going to go as deep as I dare, and then I'm going to check it with the machinetta. I position it over. I put it down until it touches. You can still see the uh, remnants of those lines, but I'm going to make new lines right inside that crater. And now look how close I am, probably five, six millimeters away. So you slide it down until it touches, like that. Now I'm only about two millimeters away. So at this point, I don't really want to use heavy chisels that will send bruises and fractures, you know, a few millimeters into the surface. So what I want to do is I want to just create a little tiny pit, a little hole directly on that point. And I use this three millimeter curved chisel and I just spin it in my hands. And it easily, easily digs into the surface of the marble. You can see it there. And 
hopefully I did it just enough. Let's look at the needle as it comes down. And yeah, it looks like a fraction of a millimeter away from the surface, all right? Which is good enough. The rest of the material I'll take away when I'm rasping and filing and polishing. So that point is taken. The last thing I want to do is color in the bottom of that hole with a pencil. It's easy to lose these little pits, especially when you start getting a couple hundred of them. And that's how you take a point. How you take the first point is exactly how you take the last point and all the hundreds of points in between. Um, you start with the high points, you know, the, the most projecting parts of your, your cast, things like the nose and the chin, you know, top of head and side of cheekbone and that sort of thing. And then you take all the high points in between the high points, and you start to build more and more dots. And the more points you take, the more you can start to see the form emerge, and the more you can trust your visual judgment and start to sort of connect the dots. And at a certain point, you just put the machinetta away, you connect the dots, you finish it off by eye. This is exactly what I teach in my marble carving workshops, both in Florence, Italy, and in Wiltshire. In fact, this is uh, the work that I produced last year in 2015 at the two-week workshop up in Wiltshire. And I'll be doing that same course again uh, this summer, August 8th through 20th, 2016. Uh, every student will have the opportunity to copy a plaster cast of their choosing into beautiful Italian Carrara marble. All the marble, all the tools, all the materials are provided, including the Macaneta. We do it in a beautiful countryside setting, and we have a lot of fun. And if you're interested in taking the Wiltshire Workshop 2016, you can find out all the information at our website, thesculptorsfuneral.com. Just click on the Wiltshire Workshop button you find there. Or you can contact me directly through my website, jasonarkles.com. Hope you enjoyed the video. I'll see you in Wiltshire.